everyone, and welcome to the Centurion Leadership Battalion podcast, your source of accountability, inspiration, and motivation to become your best and reach your fullest potential every day. Our motto, it's simple, to use our determination to crush our everyday leadership tasks so that we dominate in our delivery of services and products to our clients and achieve victory in personal growth, profitability, and creating environments for those around us to prosper. Let's get this show started. Welcome back to the Centurion Leadership Battalion podcast. This is your host, Elena and Justin, and we are so happy to have you listening in with us today. Thank you for tuning in for our episode. We will be doing a Q&A episode today, which is one of my favorites to record for you. As always, we'd love to hear your questions that you have regarding leading or leadership uh, whatever it may be for you. We'd love to hear your questions. You can submit them on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Centurion Leadership Battalion, or you can send them over to us on email. We will put all of the links in the description of the podcast. So thanks for listening in with us. And I will let Justin say hello to everyone. And then I will, uh, introduce the topic for the day. Hey everyone. How's everyone doing today? I think it's Friday We're, though. This will release on a Tuesday. Um, or Thursday. But anyway, hello, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks, Elena, for adjusting your schedule so we could record and let's start leading. Awesome. How are you doing, Elena? What are we a week to two weeks away from the magic life changing moment? Yep, we're about two my- weeks max, which is really crazy. I'm hoping it's sooner because I am really feeling it. I'm really tired. So I'm hoping that it might be a little bit sooner. But yeah, two more weeks, which is really crazy. I feel like it's gone by really quick. That's amazing. So is Greg ready is the question. Does he know what's about to happen to him? I think that he thinks he knows. Um, He has a lot of nieces and nephews that he spends a lot of time with, but I keep trying to explain that this is not the same because we can't just give the child back. So um, I think he's ready and he's really excited. So it'll be, it'll be a really fun experience to see him transition into that role too. Yeah. When the pian, the proverbial, the proverbial piano falls on your head, you can't get out from underneath it so easily anymore. So Exactly. But it's a cool experience, I got to say, and it's definitely a changing perspective and gives humans uh, part of their purpose for sure, I believe. So we are very excited. But yeah, thanks for asking. Everything is going well. And one of these days when I'm recording, there may be a little baby in the background. So we <laughs> we will see. Um, but we can hop into our question for today. So today's question is, what is the reason you pursued a leadership role in life? So um, I am not probably your I'm probably atypical. Everyone probably assumes because <clears throat> my social media or doing podcasts or even doing a leadership podcast that I wanted to lead in the first place or that there's times that I led um, because I chose because I chose to or I wanted to. OK, like I think I choosing to and wanting to are two different things. I think thinking it's the right thing to do and realizing that the people around you need someone to lead and therefore taking the risk to do it when no one else will do it is very different. Um, I think we have a lot in the world today where everyone wants to be a CEO and everyone wants to be an entrepreneur and everyone wants to be their own boss and um, everyone wants to be completely independent yet somehow function in the world. And with that being said, they want to be leaders also. So the, the things that's going on with the I generation and the me generation and my feelings and my opinions becoming more truth than actual truth is the leaders that step up are going to be driven by the fame and the fortune and the idea of all of it more than ever versus 
a lot of leaders who have not necessarily wanted to lead, but couldn't help themselves because it was either became part of their purpose or they had to lead to get to their purpose, uh, true purpose, or build the company that they wanted or to make the impact with the family they wanted or create a better community or business. So leaders that step up are often people that see an opportunity to lead. It's not always that they've wanted to lead a majority. Even in politics, I would say there's really good politicians that I would call them because they've served, but they've sort of been other things at life and they've made it their purpose to give. And that's one of the ways that they've given and they gave and they sort of did what they needed to do. And they, they didn't make it lifelong because it wasn't about lifelong making an impact in only one place. It's about lifelong making an impact in a lot of places through one common area, common visionary thread like leadership in particular. So ask the question again, Elena, just one more time for the audience, please. Sure, what is the reason you pursued a leadership role in life? So when I was a kid, whether it was on the farm or in soccer, it was really because no one else would. Like no one else would take the initiative to make a decision. The faster we made a decision, the faster it got over with, the faster I could move on with my life and go do what I wanted to do. So selfish based at first, I led not because the selfishness of wanting to lead, but the selfishness of not wanting to wait around because no one would or lose soccer games because no one would lead. It just was, it was too horrible. The pain of stepping up and having everyone make fun of you or call you a failure or try to tear you down is nowhere near as painful to me as losing, period. Like there is no way, fine, don't like me, hate me even, don't want to hang out with me outside the team, but we can win. And I want everyone to feel the win because that's better and makes you a winner in life than whether you like me or not. And so in a weird way, that mentality puts you in a position to be a leader. Those who covenant, those who covet leading companies, those who, um, those who, want it more than anything and it's not a purpose or it's not for a greater good or if it's not for making a greater impact your leadership role is going to be short most likely and if it's long it's going to be unimpactful in the long run so like really I can't emphasize it more. You can choose to be a leader. You should choose to lead your own life and choose to be a leader in every way. But a leadership role, um, you should want to step into it. You should want to lead. Um, but you need to do it in a way where you can give to the world and in a way that your leadership and your energy is worth more than just the skill that you're giving, you know, whether it's management or it's accounting or it's biology or chemistry, like your skill should be more than that. We talk a lot about leadership being one of the three things that you really need to focus on in a career and your capacity to grow. But the choosing a leadership role was different for me. I don't like it. I'm a really shy, funny, everyone says it, but I'm pretty internal. I do more, I spend more time in my own head than anywhere else. Like a lot of time and multiple thoughts. And, you know, even Deborah says sometimes, where are you? It's because I'm so in my head and down so many holes and multiple thoughts that it's where I prefer to be. I grew up on a farm. I had a lot of time to myself. I'm pretty introverted. I like tasks, tangible tasks that I can do myself and complete. So I'm just not, I wasn't always naturally team oriented. You know, it took team sports, it took coaches, it took realizing that I was better with a team than I was alone. And then from there, once I realized that it was, if there was lack of leadership or poor leadership, I just would step into it because I would want to win as a business, 
um, anywhere. And even at Food Service Partners, as I've taken a leadership role in Food Service Partners, Food Service Partners wasn't my, isn't always my main thing. I've done other entrepreneurial things. I've done things to try to explore my career and my understanding so I could come back to Food Service Partners and give things back to it. But again, it comes down to when there's lack of leadership in situations, someone's got to step up. And the person that's willing to take the risk to do it and receive hell and receive feedback and receive pushback, but has the willingness to do it and learn. And maybe they don't succeed this time, but they'll be willing to do it again and try to succeed again and learn from the last time. That's an incredible human. And it's a quality that most humans don't possess. Most humans are followers. We like keeping up with the Joneses merely by nature. That's why we gossip. It keeps everyone equal. It equalizes everyone by putting everyone down equally as gossiping. Cool. But if you want to lead, you've got to rise above it. And by nature of not wanting to and then doing it and having more of a mindset that winning was what was best for everyone, regardless of how many feelings were hurt, that ultimately, if they wanted to be good soccer players or good humans or good business people or successful in their life, you have to work hard. Life is that way. I saw it around the world. I knew it at a very young age. Life is extremely hard. And unless you know how to pick yourself back up when other people knock you down or buildings uh, or things knock you down or lead when no one else will lead and do it from a good moral character, then it doesn't matter. So um, one more time, the question, Elena. What is the reason you pursued a leadership role in life? <clears throat> yeah. So I will answer the third part of the question. So now I pursue the leadership part of my life. That's why I do the podcast. That's why over the last five years in food service partners, as I've seen us lack capacity to grow and lack leadership, even though we have people with years upon years of skills that I've taken a leadership role. And even though I didn't want to, I did. And I used the Centurion Leadership Battalion internally to try to build people. And as a leader, when you step up and lead and actually start to move people forward, what you will find in any environment is those who are unwilling or who have never been given the skills to understand what it is to grow or be a leader or have the capacity to grow, they do not grow. And they are not used to having a leader because what they've done is they flatten your organization by gossiping and not leading and making things very sterile. And so when someone goes to lead, the first thing they all do instead of tearing each other down is try to tear down the leader. It actually is what unites them. And everyone thinks then that the leader is the problem because all of a sudden all the problems united in one voice. So they have one voice, so we should listen to them. It's just not true. Usually one voice unites because a new leader comes along and holds them accountable. And most leaders are people just wanting to do the right thing. They're actually not wanting to lead. And so me leading now and doing the leadership at time is me wanting to do the right thing by the employees or the team members, excuse me, of food service partners, the world that I believe lacks leadership, a world where we don't teach leadership enough in schools and where we don't understand that when you come out of even college, you have a management degree you know, if you're in business and you have a degree in a skill, you have a lot of other things to learn yet, like coordinating, like parenting, like execute, being an executive, being a director. What's the difference between directing, managing, coordinating, evaluating, executing as an executive? Those are all things that we just assume we jump up the chain and we kind of learn from other people in the business and we kind of train around those things. But the reality is, is we should already be prepared to be the CEO of life, of our own lives, before we ever become a CEO of a business or a parent in our family. So choosing the leadership role, I started doing it five years ago. 
uh, choosing it by choice before I would step into it or I chase a business opportunity or I'd see an opportunity to grow or grow people or grow athletes in particular because of being an athlete myself and really feeling in my heart that that that's one of the things I was meant to be is just an athlete in life and, and see that you can be a lifelong athlete and have health and demonstrate that people and show it's possible, no matter whether you're an entrepreneur or a business person or work crazy hours or not, you can make it a priority and still have a good home life and those type of things. So the decision to actually leave would have happened four or five years ago. Before that, I led because I needed to because of the situation or the opportunity and no one else would. Now I'm just not going to wait around for anyone else to not do it. So I'll do it in other leaders. I hope I pull them through because what I'm trying to do now is pull through and develop leaders, not only in FSP and Primal Rock and Better with Bacon Fat and Grown Strong, et cetera, et cetera or within Arite that we're a part of, it's to how many people can we grow to be great leaders so the world stands a chance after we're gone. So someone actually remembers what it's like to be a positive, good, genuine, caring, kind, righteous can, uh, leader that has conviction, that can weigh things in a balance. Where are those leaders? maybe we haven't even seen them yet in a majority in the world up to this point. I would probably argue that based on history, that as a whole, we have not as humans stepped up and led for the betterment of the world. We take small steps here and there, but it's nothing what we could do if we all truly tried together. Whether it's eating the right way or it's just stopping gossiping and saying negative things about people and focusing on what I can do better instead of what someone else can do better. So I don't lead because I want people to listen to me or direct them other some ego trip. My ego is the other ego in leadership. My ego is where I've learned it and I've had hard knocks and that I trust my gut. It doesn't mean I don't listen to people or I don't try to still make myself the dumbest person in the room. That's what also people don't realize. If you're not continually get smarter and you're in food service partners or better with bacon fat, it's no different than any other business. I purposely hire you to, and develop you so you're smarter than me, so you can give me valuable advice. If you're not staying ahead of me on your own accord, I need to find someone who is smarter than me, who can keep pushing me, bringing me to that level. That's leadership. Leadership isn't taking care of the status quo or keeping mediocrity around. And the thing about leadership is why most people are scared of it because when it comes down to it you have to fire people you have to believe that that helps them grow if they choose to you have to make hard choices life choices on behalf of people's family and things as an entrepreneur and most leaders cower when it comes to that most people leaders are cowards and have other people do it for them so part of the podcast was not only showing to the world that we can talk about these things, that there is the ability to have more of a leadership role in our lives and, and making it part of our ethos. It's also that we need to fight the negativity that's going on in the world through our leadership skills. And the reason we don't is because we just lack the backbone. And the backbone comes from a true ego, not an ego built on insecurities. I'm talking about an ego built on the hard knocks of life and doing the right thing and, and growing morally and ethically on a set of core values or pillars. I'm going to leave it there because I think I laid a lot on Elena, possibly where I may have just melted her mind down for anyone in the audience because that is pretty deep and well beyond the question that was asked. And I don't give simple answers on this podcast. I hear it all the time. Why can't you just answer the question? Because it's not that simple. I wish it was, but in my experiences, the simpler you make the human answer, the more complicated your life gets, okay? 
But what I mean about complicated is it has to be self-reflected complication by the people. How do you get people to set personal goals and self-reflect in complicated ways that make them feel that make them feel they can successfully walk through the boundaries, the blocks, the the blockades, the holdbacks, the setbacks that are in their own head? Because when they point at other people and they go after other people, they're not working on themselves. It's just not happening. And that's when leaders, someone that's a leader that it doesn't care what other people think. And it's wrong to say, because people are going to say, how can you lead when you don't care what other people think? You're not understanding what I'm saying. There's a difference between what people need to survive and to have a legacy and have ability to make their own choices in life and giving them freedom to have their opinions throw toxicity and venom everywhere. So generally, I have stepped up and found that I lead as Justin when there is no other solution, because I'm actually generally not naturally inclined to it, contrary to what everyone thinks. Nope. Had to develop the skill, had to learn it through soccer, had to learn how to be a team player how to develop teams, how to work really hard at it. That's why I'm so good at putting teams together now and leading them and coaching them and understanding what people's superpowers are. And instead of focusing on people's negatives and differences, I focus on how those superpowers coordinate with one another. You know, questions we ask, how, what position do I play the best in the company or on the field? What position on the field or in the company best supports the position I play? What about the position that supports that position and so on and so forth. And then you can suddenly see that you can't do this alone. And your ego needs to get checked at the door, especially if it's insecurity. And the ego you should have is that you're a team player. And the ego that you should have is you lead when needed. And the ego that you should have is you know when it's not your time to lead and let someone else on the team to do it. So the question is a funny one because it's a leadership role stating that it's permanent, okay? In the hierarchy of a company, yes, it's a leadership hierarchy and it has different levels and there's a boss and a directive that goes down the hierarchy through the company. But leadership goes up and down the chain of command, period, or it doesn't work. It means that in the military, there is a sergeant that helps balance things between the non-commissioned or a sergeant that's a non-commissioned officer, meaning he didn't go to school, that represents the troops and has been to basic camp that helps coordinate and, and manage the relationship between the lieutenants and the troops. Why is that? What does that person's role play? He can relate to both parties. He went to basic boot camp. He was in the trenches, but he also has the education and the experience to bridge the gap and handle and lead up and down the chain of command. He has more experience than the lieutenant, usually by the time the lieutenant gets there. Some of them have three, four tours by the time they get a new lieutenant or they get a new lieutenant every tour. So this is not something new. This is not something we don't know how to do as humans. This is just something that we're unwilling to do or, or trying to push around because we don't understand that leadership is about doing what needs to be done, not what I want to be done or how I want myself to be looked at during that process. And a lot of times, by the time you step up, it's such a shit storm and things are so bad, you're getting blamed for everything and your reputation's ruined, at least for the short term. And if you stick to it and you turn it around and you never give up, you turn that thing around and your leadership role is temporary. And even in a company where I talked about leading up and down the chain of command and the sergeant, the sergeant leads when he has to, not the lieutenant. And each person in that platoon, in this case, takes a chance at leading or leading the pack because someone gets tired at the front, so they rotate. 
in most cases. Same with the back, you wanna rotate that so they keep the mind active and it doesn't get too used to monotony because monotony leads to tired and tired leads to sleep and not alertness. So making uncomfortableness and moving people around in the leader and allowing the leadership role to shift even though there's a leadership hierarchy is the key to this question. What do you think, Elena? I think that that was a really deep explanation of the question. And I like how you shared. Um, there were a few points that I really liked that you shared and some may seem irrelevant now that it's been a while since you said them. Um, but you were sharing about sometimes when there are a group of people who start to uh, not go against the leader, but kind of call out issues with a certain leader a lot of times it's, you know, viewed that the leader is the problem, but sometimes it's not the leader that's the problem. It's, you know, the group that's kind of banded together. And you shared a few similar stories of that. You also said something about gossiping. Um, and the reason why people gossip is to feel, I think, can't think of the way that you, ex you explained it and have that part down. You said that, you know, the reason people gossip is so everyone is on an equal playing field, something along those lines. And I thought that that was really interesting. Um, and I was just kind of thinking when you were sharing all of that and sharing about how, you know, it's hard for, it's hard to be that person that steps up into a leadership role. And this doesn't just have to be within a business. Um, or, you know, a management position or anything like that in a hierarchy, any, any sort of stepping outside of the box makes people feel, um, sometimes like they have to look at themselves and they feel less about themselves. So it's easier to tear down other people that are doing differently than you, than it is to, um, build yourself up to do those same things. If that's what you want. I mean, some people have no desire to ever be outside of the norm in the day to day. And that's totally fine. That's everyone's um, personal choice. But I think, you know, that's kind of what I took away from your explanation and the parts that I was really thinking of is, I think that applies a lot, especially in the younger generations. Um, when people start doing things differently, I think times are changing a little bit now to where it is the norm. You know, like you said, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Everyone wants to, you know, have their own business and what and whatnot. But I think it is becoming a little bit more acceptable in our society. Um, not always, but anytime anyone does something different, there is that, you know, that need to tear people down. And I've always kind of noticed that and thought about that, but I like the way that you explained that, you know, sometimes people, when they feel, you know, inadequate, they band together with other people and then to tear that one person down, who's, you know, doing something different and whatnot. So that was, that was always really interesting and stuck out to me the most, um, from everything that you were sharing. I think you're on mute. I don't know if you were talking. Um, we do something interesting as companies, and I love this topic, Elena, and we were going to record two today, but we're just going to record one because I think what you touched on is important and we need to continue down this road. Okay, and that's this. Um, the first part is team, right? In order to lead, there has to be one or more people that you lead right? So there has to be a team or a group of people in which to lead in the first place, okay? Or something you're going to take up like a purpose, but in order to lead it, there has to be others that believe in a similar purpose, just saying. That being said, the most important thing is teamwork. And even in team sports in the world today, we very much still focus on the individual superstars. Yes, they play the, play, the game well. Yes, they are the, the, the best players and we buy their jerseys, but we don't really focus on the whole teams. Okay, even in business, we give a lot of credit to CEOs and not to the teams or the teams they put in place. He's a great strategy person. Yep, but he also had a really good fucking team that he put together that all played their position really well. What about them? 
And so that being said, you know, one of my filler statements probably at this point, and I have a lot of them. In 2002, the New England Patriots did something different than any other team. And it built a legacy by which Tom Brady went to 10 Super Bowls, most of which were with the New England Patriots, a legacy that's unmatched, that was built out of nowhere. All because one franchise had the idea that football was actually a team sport and we need to stop focusing so much on the individuals. So much so Tom Brady didn't even have a social media account until two years ago when he went to Tampa Bay. Probably because they required it for social media, but at New England, it wasn't about that to him. So in 2002, and in history up until then, since the 1930s, Every football, the announcement was about the star players and where they went to school and the team. And then the fans cheered because everyone related to the star players and that's how they marketed the team. But the New England Patriots came out in 2002 and were introduced as the 2002 New England Patriots. As a team, Tom Brady gave up his name. Everyone gave up their name for 60 some million people or whatever the number was, probably more in the Super Bowl at the time. So strong, such an impact, such a business minded individual up there in New England that saw that he had to go to the blue ocean strategy, if anyone's read that book, or where the opportunity is actually where no one isn't. And it's usually the opportunity that's the most obvious and going to make the most impact. And that's truest to whatever you're looking at, because humans have manipulated it beyond its true point in the first place. Like we did with football, we've manipulated it to be an eye sport. It's a team sport. So if you're going to lead, what is it that you're leading? Are you leading because it boosts your ego or it gives you credibility or you think it's going to stand up in your career? Are you leading because it makes all the members on the team better humans? And if you're ever down or you ever get in the hospital or you ever get kicked down, you better make sure you've trained all of them in hopes that one person will stand up in the crowd when it's necessary to lead, not when you're choosing to, when it's necessary. Leadership isn't built in good companies that are doing well. You want to be a leader. You want to go up in the world. Find a company that sucks shit and be part of the solution to make it not suck anymore. Especially now after COVID, find that. If you're a young kid and you're listening to this podcast, find the companies that are not doing well or trying to rebuild or going through a transition or a leadership transition or from one generation to another, like it's going on here at Food Service Partners and the struggles because there's opportunity there. Believe me, I made my whole life on looking where no one else is looking, going where no one else would go. But the team has to be that. The team in the world we live in, again, still 20 years later after the New England Patriots, is the world is still playing the eye game with the iPhone and the iWatch. I love them. They save life. Nothing against them. I use them. I believe they're extremely important for the world. No knocks. That wasn't a hateful thing I just said. But when we don't see the team or our family as a team, and we're worried about my time versus actually the time as a family where everyone wins, come on. You're not leading anything. The time to lead is to find common ground where everyone wins. And if not, Teaching that sometimes someone wins, sometimes you don't, and then what it requires to be a winner in life, even when you're losing. That's a leader. And it's not predestined, and you're not born to be that way. Are, you, are there people that are more inclined and more free willed and take a more initiative to lead or start? Sure. But those same people are the people that later in life that can't initiate or figure out a way forward because they met someone that tried to put out that fire and, and successfully did it. And they weren't able to lead their own life or lead their own superpower or be the CEO of their own life to get through that. So what is, when did I decide to take a leadership role truly? When I decided to take a leadership role in my own life. 
and be responsible for my actions? And do I act like a jerk? And do I do things and do I get mad? And, and am I passionate and, and caring and, and extremely driven by wanting humans to, to stop being held back um, in their own potential because they cap themselves? Yeah, sure, know me that way. But it's what I believe in. It's my purpose. It's what I believe in athletes and humans that we have a chance, one chance to grow and make a difference. And then our soul can go whatever, or we can turn to dust or whatever. But the thing that's true for all of us, regardless of your race, regardless of your religion, regardless of what country you live in, is we have a finite time on earth in this form, for sure. So what is it that we're leading? And we point to everyone else, blaming them that they aren't leading us better. And what are they doing? And look at what I have because they, they aren't leading. Well, we're not looking in the mirror. Why am I not taking a leadership role in my own life? Why am I not taking a leadership role in the people I've influenced over and positivity on and stop gossiping with negativity to knock down all the buildings and equalize everything? Why am I not trying to pick up my friends? and make them bigger? Why am I not trying to pick up my company and the people I work with and make them bigger? Because that's the thing, that's the opportunity, guys. You wanna be a true superhuman and make millions of dollars? Grow people. It's atypical in the world we live in where everyone tears, them, tears everyone down and opinions are flying left and right on social media. Be a fucking leader. It's that simple. And do it selfishly, not on purpose, but be prepared for when you need to step up when no one will or the wrong moral and ethical person is leading. It's okay to take down that person when they're harming the group. You would fire them, you would get them out, you quote unquote, cut out the cancer. You can't have people taking down your companies. You can't have people in leadership positions that negatively infect the people around them or cut them down or don't allow them to grow into their potential because you as a company need those humans to grow and have a capacity to grow. They need to have a capacity to lead and grow in that leadership role. And they need to have a capacity for their skill and to grow in that skill. So if you have people cutting each other down and not growing each other and trying to keep everything the status quo it's not just personal and it's not just an HR issue. Your company's profitability line 10, 20 down, years down the road will be fucked. Sorry to put it that bluntly, but I don't know how else to put it because I've seen it historically all the way through. And why is change management or train strategy or strategic change such common words in the world today? But for companies and why companies ebb and flow so bad, because when one leader comes in and, and one leader goes out, we try to change things so drastically instead of being a team in the first place where the transition into leadership is gentle and why leaders can take things in new visionary directions. They were part of the building in the first place, so they're not there to tear down the old leaders work and build their own and their own statue and their own praise. They're there to do it for the team and for the company, and they're there to keep the integrity of the leadership position. So in case they can't do it or they get distracted by a family emergency or a kid being sick or in an emergency, shit, I've established the integrity of the position and the leadership position. And I've also grown the humans that into leaders around me the best that I could in a positive way, both hard and soft so that they could do it it's for me so if the true selfishness in it weirdly is that i'm building a position and leadership role that will take care of the companies i build take care of the people i believe in and take care of leadership and growth if i'm here or not and whether those humans work here or somewhere else they're getting both the intellect and the skill to be good leaders and have a capacity for growth. So <clears throat> way off topic and how narrow everyone probably thought the question was, but the reality is you should never be searching for a leadership role, but you should always be prepared for it.
then your heart and your soul and your mind and body are in a good balance when you're ready and have the patience to know when the opportunity is there, have the patience to know when no one else is there and maybe you're not ready to fail a couple of times because it's gonna fail if no one takes the role anyway or someone really unworthy steps into it. At least you're willing to do it and take the risk and fail and learn from it and not be mediocre. I really, your insight, Elena, and your questions I thought were incredible and it did throw us down a bunch of rabbit holes even further, but it's good. So I appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone listening in and Elena, I'd like, uh, I'll give you the closing comments and let, and let you say anything against what was said for sure. And, but take us home. I've definitely done a lot of the talking this episode. Definitely. Well, I think that wraps things up really well. And I'm glad that it was able to spark further conversation. Sometimes those, you know, few points that end up sparking a new topic or question within our original episode, I feel like are some of the most valuable. So that was definitely really helpful. And we'd love to hear the feedback from the audience. If you have any questions or points that you would like to share, with us, or if you have any questions that you came up with based off of what we were sharing within this episode, we would love to hear those. As I shared at the beginning, you can send those over on Facebook or Instagram at Centurion Leadership Battalion. You can also submit them uh, via email, and we will put the information for that in the description below. And we would love to hear from you and have a chance to answer some of the other questions that you have. We love whenever we receive questions from the audience. We love keeping that question box filled. So please send us and submit any that you may have for us. And we would love to get to those soon. Um, And thanks, Justin, for sharing all of that helpful information with us and giving us um, a better glimpse into some leadership skills and things that we can implement ourselves and things we can be watching out for as well. So really appreciated this episode. Yeah, me too. And the last, you know, little nibble I'll give everyone is like part of being prepared for when you're ready is when you lead, most people will step up and lead and never lead again because they aren't ready to take the amount of criticism and negativity and jealousy that comes because even though you chose it and they could have chosen it, there's still jealousy there. Even though they had the same opportunity you did to lead, they didn't. And so when I mean you're prepared, it's about mental toughness. It's about confidence and knowing what you're doing and going to get the experience to do it because your critics and the people that even though they don't step up and lead and they didn't do what they needed to do to grow as a human, when you do, they will be there to tear you down. And as a leader, we are full of contradictions because leaders try to do what's best for the team, which is a team can get closer to perfection than any other human because we're imperfect. And as an individual human, we always try to progress. And as societies, we do try to progress, but in teamwork, we can find perfection at times, not always, but at times. So the problem is, is that as human, I can know how to get a team or put together a team that works together perfectly, but it's a contradiction that people pick on as a leader, because even though I know it, it may not be 100% in my character. So all the character traits and superpowers that I admire on the team, I don't possess myself. But because I don't possess myself, I'm a contradiction in saying that we need it, even though I don't live by those exact same things, especially when I do a podcast about them. Of course, I'm a contradiction and a team. I don't want you to be like me or do the same things I do or lead in the same way that I do. 
that's the point of the team is perspective, but also at the same time as have different perspective, different instruments we play, yet all play the same music in unison. That sounds good. Jam bands do it all the time. They're in improvising and they're playing off each other or jazz bands. You know, so as a leader, you have to keep that coordination between the instruments and you have to know how those instruments or what instruments need to be played at what time sometimes to do it. And then once you've trained everyone, they become a jam band. They can play and adjust to each other and stay in rhythm without you around. They just hear each other and then it goes um, from there. So I'm sorry to go on again, but I just, you're gonna get criticized and you're gonna have critics and it's your life is gonna be a contradiction. It sucks, you know? It's no different than my life being country. So I believe in healthy food and humane raised animals and I eat really healthy and every once in a while I eat a Snickers bar or a bag of Cheetos. Doesn't make any sense. I just do it. it it's a contradiction. Just saying. It also makes me interesting because it also makes me human that I'm not perfect and no leader will be but we need, instead of always picking on the leaders, we should look at their leadership strategy with the teams that they run, not what they represent and not necessarily just their own moral and ethical values, but what is the combined moral and ethical value of that team as a whole that's leading? You know, the president, the vice president, the vice president's cabinet. The president, what does that look like? How are those teams being run? How's that communication going? We don't weigh that. We're electing a person to be the greatest team leader in the world, and we care less about the way he leads a team and more about what his personal point of view is. Weird. You ask me, upside down world we live in. Okay, none of the credentials we vote on are based on your ability to lead or your ability to put a team together to lead, or how about solve a problem with the team? None of those are the credentials but we elect it. We would not hire and pay someone to do a job without a basic skill and an understanding that they could lead in their job and had a capacity to grow in our organization. But yet we do it everywhere else in our leadership roles. So not to keep going on, but it's just, it's weird. It's like upside down in the human brain. <clears throat> it's not logical in my opinion. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Elena, for bringing us home. I really, you know, you're going to get critiqued. You're going to have critics and you're going to have contradiction. So till the next time. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.